The crypto market has been crazy lately, and one coin that's been melting mines is Sol, which has smoothly sneaked its way into the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap. Now, this is simply because Solana's ecosystem has been growing at an exponential rate. Hundreds of thousands of users are flocking to Solana's NFT platforms and DeFi protocols, and many of these are now also creeping to the top of DAP leaderboards for TVL and trading volume. Solana has also seen a significant amount of institutional investment and adoption, with more than half a billion dollars injected in just the last few months, and permissioned pools being offered up to legacy players. As is the case with all cryptocurrencies, early adopters have the most to gain, and for the time being, Solana is still very much in its early days. Today, I'm going to give you a quick recap of what Solana is, take you through all the tools you need to explore Solana's expanding ecosystem, and where to find its next generation crypto gems. Before we explore the Solana scene, I need to give you a bit of sunscreen. What you see in this video might get your FOMO hot, but investment advice this video is not. Blindly copying crypto YouTubers will only get you hurt, which is why you should always do your own research. You should also know that I hold Sol in my own cryptocurrency portfolio. Even though Solana's price is hovering around its highest, I'll do my best to be unbiased. Whether you found your way here through an algorithm or a friend, my name is Guy and my mission is to show you that crypto is more than a trend. I do this by creating some of the highest quality crypto content on the internet. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, exchanges, tokens, market moves, and financial literacy too. If you're looking for knowledge that will still matter when the bull market ends, subscribing to the channel and pinging that notification bell is what I recommend. I know that time is of the essence, which is why I've left some timestamps below that you can use to skip between today's lessons. Watching until the end is something I appreciate, but if you've got things to do, it's more important to me for you not to be late. So now that you're on board, let me show you around Solana's world. If you somehow never heard of Solana, here's a quick rundown. Solana was founded in 2017 by veteran computer scientist Anatoly Yakovenko. Solana was built by Solana Labs, a software company based in San Diego, California, which raised over $25 million between multiple sales of the Sol coin in 2019 and 2020. Like most cryptocurrency projects, Solana is owned, operated, and overseen by the Solana Foundation, a nonprofit based in Switzerland which commissions Solana Labs to maintain the Solana blockchain. In contrast to most cryptocurrency projects, Solana's blockchain can process transactions at speeds comparable to traditional payment processors. Official figures range from 50 to 65,000 TPS. Now, this is all thanks to Solana's unique proof of stake consensus mechanism, which uses a decentralized timekeeping mechanism called proof of history to timestamp transactions. Solana also has a novel architecture which divides validator nodes on the blockchain into DAP specific clusters. Solana staking rewards are about 7% per year for both validators and delegators with a five day unlock period. Misbehaving validators will eventually lose 100% of their stake for messing with the blockchain. The sole coin is Solana's native cryptocurrency. It's used for staking and to pay for transaction fees on Solana. 50% of all transaction fees on Solana are burned, with the other half going to validators and delegators. Sol's initial supply is 500 million, and it has a diminishing annual inflation rate, which begins at 8% and falls to just 1% after 15 years. Only 1.6% of Sol's initial supply was sold to regular investors in a public sale, while 35% of Sol's supply was sold to early investors across those various private sales mentioned earlier. About 38% of Sol's initial supply went into a community treasury custodied by the Solana Foundation, and the remainder went to the Solana team and foundation. Sol's initial supply distribution was subject to an extremely aggressive vesting schedule which completed earlier this year. The only coins which have not yet fully vested are those belonging to Solana's founders. 
Although the Solana mainnet went live in March 2020, Solana is still technically in beta and has a few quirks which I'll point out later. Even so, Solana has managed to attract hundreds of thousands of individuals and dozens of institutions from both inside and outside of the cryptocurrency space, and has proven itself to be a serious contender in the smart contract cryptocurrency niche. Now, if you want to learn more about how Solana works, you can watch my first video about the project using the link up there in the top right. When it comes to interacting with the Solana blockchain, the first step is to download a web wallet browser extension. Your best bet here is the Phantom web wallet, which I'll leave a link to in the video description. Once you've navigated to the Phantom extension on the Chrome Web Store, click Add to Chrome and then click Add Extension on the pop-up that shows up. This will automatically open a new page. After clicking on Create New Wallet, you will be asked to store your secret recovery phrase. Now, this seed phrase is how you can recover the funds on your web wallet if anything happens to your computer. So don't show your seed phrase to anyone and make sure to keep it in a safe place. Once you've done that, click on the blue button below the seed phrase. Next, you'll be asked to create a password, which you should also not tell anyone. Once you've come up with a password, make sure to agree to the terms of service. I gave them a quick skim and nothing concerning stood out, but do give them a read yourself if that's your style. Once you've clicked Confirm, you'll be told about a keyboard shortcut you can use to open the Phantom Web Wallet, which I really should start using. After that, just click Finish and you're all set. Now that you've set up your Solana Web Wallet, you can move on to the second step, which is loading up on some Sol coins. Now, the best place to buy Sol is the FTX US cryptocurrency exchange, and that's because the Phantom Web Wallet can be connected directly to your FTX US account. Note that this integration is not currently available for FTX Global, though you should have no issues making an FTX US account even if you're not based in the United States. If you don't have an FTX US account yet, you can set one up by following the instructions in the video up there in the top right. After you've purchased some Sol coins on FTX US, open up the Phantom Web Wallet by clicking the puzzle piece in the top right of your browser, and then click on Deposit Sol. Click on Deposit from FTX, and a pop-up should show up prompting you to sign into your FTX US account. After signing in, you'll have to manually type in how much Sol you want to transfer into Phantom from FTX US. Note that your Sol balance is noted just beneath the area where you input this number. Once you've clicked Pay Now, another pop-up will show up confirming that your withdrawal was successful and you can close out that window. Now, we wait. Typically, it doesn't take longer than two minutes for your Sol balance to show up, and once it's there, you're ready to dabble with some Solana dApps. At the time of shooting, there are about 100 or so dApps on Solana, and most of the action is taking place in the top 20 or so dApps by TVL. These can be found on DeFi Llama under the Solana tab and on solanaproject.com. The first dApp you should familiarize yourself with is a DeFi protocol called Radium, which acts as a sort of one-stop shop for everything DeFi on Solana. Radium's AMM DEX has been particularly popular, and it recently became one of the top DEXs in cryptocurrency by trading volume. As you can see, Radium's DEX is basically a carbon copy of Uniswap, except it's way faster and way cheaper to use. To connect your Phantom Wallet to Radium, click the Connect button on the top right of the screen. This will open up a long list of supported web wallets, and Phantom is the first one on the list. After you give that a click, you'll be prompted by the Phantom extension to connect to Radium. To make life easy, make sure to enable the Auto Approve Transactions option before clicking Connect. This option will prevent all of those approved transaction pop-ups you get when using other Web3 extensions like MetaMask. Instead, they'll all be sent through in a single click. To show you just how amazing this is, I'm going to buy some USDC with half of the Sol I transferred to my Phantom wallet. When I click Swap, there is no pop-up. The transaction is complete within fewer than five seconds. And when I open up my Phantom Wallet, I can see that I have USDC with a sub-cent fee in Sol deducted from my Solana balance. 
Another cool feature of Phantom is that you can actually toggle which tokens you want to see in the wallet by clicking on the Manage Token List button just beneath your balance. The list you're given is pretty damn lengthy, and you should be able to easily look up every token you're looking to trade. On the off chance that your token isn't on the list, you'll need to enter the Token Mint address manually to add it to the list, and this can be easily done using the Solana Beach Explorer. Just look up the token you want to add, copy the address just below the token's name, and enter that along with the other information requested by the custom token option you get when clicking the plus button next to the token search box in the Phantom extension. Note that doing this will cost some sol. Now, logically, the same process applies if you're trying to find a token on the Radium DEX. Simply enter the token mint address in the search box that pops up when you click on the token you're trading with. In this case, that's USDC. Now, sometimes transactions made on the Radium DEX will fail for whatever reason. I reckon this has to do with the fact that Solana is still in beta, and it's something I've experienced on Solana's other dApps too. Usually, retrying the transaction will do the trick. If this issue persists, however, an easy fix is to use the built-in swap app in the Phantom extension, which can be accessed by clicking on the icon with the two arrows at the bottom of the Phantom extension window. This swap option is slightly more expensive, but you probably won't notice given that swap fees on Solana cost a fraction of a cent, regardless of which DEX you're using. So, now that you know how to trade tokens on Solana, you're ready to find those next 100x gems. Now, I'll start by saying that you need to make sure you're abiding by the securities laws in your country or region. If initial exchange offerings and initial DEX offerings are illegal where you are, do not participate in them. If you're not sure, it's your responsibility to find out, and it's on you if you get in trouble. With that said, there are three places you can find up-and-coming Solana projects. The first place is the global version of the FTX exchange, which I also have a tutorial for if you don't have an account there yet. And of course, that's up there in the top right. FTX has hosted nine initial exchange offerings so far, and almost all of these have been for projects building on Solana. This is primarily because FTX is one of the biggest backers of Solana, and FTX's own DeFi ecosystem, dubbed Project Serum, is built on the Solana blockchain. The nice thing about FTX's IEOs is that the projects involved are thoroughly vetted in advance, just like the projects you find on the Binance launchpad. The trade-off is you'll probably have a hard time participating in FTX's IEOs because they require having a sizable amount of FTX's FTT token. Moreover, many of the projects introduced through FTX's IEOs have horrendously low sale allocations, with the overwhelming majority of the tokens going to early investors and the teams behind the projects. As I mentioned in my video about the importance of cryptocurrency tokenomics, this sort of setup creates a lot of sell pressure, which has a tendency to suppress prices. Thankfully, there's a second place you can find upcoming Solana projects, and that's Radium's Accelerator Launchpad. Radium's Accelerator has hosted about half a dozen initial DEX offerings, and most of these projects are backed by FTX and other heavyweights in the crypto space. Now, unfortunately, participating in Radium's IDOs also requires a sizable amount of capital. The process is also slightly more complex, and you'll have to do some extra research on the cryptos you find there to make sure they're legit, since project vetting is not as rigorous as it is on FTX. The nice thing about Radium, though, is that even if you buy the token shortly after the IDO, they generally have a lot more upside potential simply because they haven't been listed on any exchanges yet. Some FTX-backed projects, such as Star Atlas, saw their tokens list on FTX shortly after the IDO, and this is definitely something to be on the lookout for on Radium and elsewhere. So this brings me to the third place you can find upcoming Solana projects, and that's Solanium, which launched recently. If the name didn't give it away, Solanium has a similar IDO process as Radium, but the barriers to entry are a bit lower, at least for now. Again, the main advantage here is that you can get word of any promising projects long before they list on any reputable exchanges. The caveat here is that you'll have to do a lot more due diligence on any projects you'll find on Solanium, as well as any other up-and-coming launchpad platforms for Solana projects due to more relaxed vetting. 
Luckily for you, I happen to have a full tutorial on how to research upcoming cryptocurrency projects, and you can find it up there in the top right. Now, the last thing I want to show you today is Solana's NFT marketplaces. Some of you have probably noticed that Solana's NFTs have been in the news lately, and that's because they've also been selling for ridiculous prices. You can buy and sell pieces from Solana's most popular NFT collections on solanart.io. Any FTs you buy there should automatically show up in your Phantom Wallet in the Collectibles tab, which you can access by clicking that four square icon at the bottom of the Phantom extension window. Now, I won't be picking up a Solana NFT piece today, though. I think it's a bit overheated. On that note, you can see various statistics about Solana's NFT collections on solana.io, the most important of which is the price floor for those NFTs, i.e. the lowest price they're being sold at. The downside to Solana is that it doesn't give you access to all the other NFTs being minted on Solana, just the most popular collections. As it so happens, FTX recently released its own NFT marketplace, which lets you buy, sell, and mint NFTs on both Solana and Ethereum. Although you won't be able to withdraw any NFTs you purchase to your Phantom Wallet for the time being, FTX's documentation suggests this will soon be possible. And not only that, but you'll even be able to deposit any Solana NFTs you bought elsewhere and put them up for sale on FTX's NFT marketplace. If you want to mint your own Solana NFT, start by going to FTX's NFT marketplace, and I'll leave a link to it in the video description for your convenience. Once you're there, click on Create. This will open up a new page where you can fill in all the details about your NFT and upload the image. Note that you'll have to pay $10 to submit your NFT, and FTX ultimately decides if your NFT is good enough to list on its marketplace. So make sure you put up something that's good quality. I know this isn't all that ideal, but as far as I know, it's the only way you can currently mint an NFT on Solana without having to write any code. Now, as far as Solana's ecosystem goes, I reckon this is almost everything you need to know for now. Do remember, though, to double check wallet addresses before sending, do your own research before buying any new tokens, and be on the lookout for any scams. And that's all I've got for today's Solana tutorial. I hope you learned a thing or two, and if you did, give that like button a click. If you plan on coming back, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell to get a notification when the next video hits the tube. In the meantime, you can check out the Coin Bureau Clips channel for behind the scenes takes and original flicks, and follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for memes and other awesome shit. If you're having a hard time keeping up with the crypto market, join my free Telegram channel to get the daily crypto updates you need to stay up to speed. If you happen to be curious about what other cryptocurrencies I hold besides Sol, subscribe to my weekly newsletter to find out. It's got all the tools, tips, and tricks you need to make your own portfolio look just as good. If you have any leftover crypto or cash, consider heading on over to the Coin Bureau merch store to get your hands on the best crypto merch while supplies last. Links to my other channels, socials, Telegram, weekly newsletter, merch store, and more are waiting for you down in the description below. Thank you, as always, for your time and attention. Drop me a comment if there's anything I forgot to mention. And until we meet again, stay crypto, my friends.